The Upside is brought to you by IBEW Local 230. Hi, and welcome to the Best of the Upside, coming to you from the stunning North Island. Today, we're in beautiful Port McNeil, where we played uh, Wheel of McNeil during the show this week. There's the wheel. Still maintain the cash prize. Yeah, and that's good because I don't have any Finskis left because you didn't bring any on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to focus on that because I'm too focused on the great crowd we've drawn here in McNeil. There's, yay! There they are. So thanks for that. Wonderful people here. We've met wonderful people, you know, all over Port McNeil and Port Hardy. Want to say hi to Mike Grill. Oh, Sea Wolf Adventures today. We were out on the night inlet. That's right. And it was an unbelievable trip. Yeah. And uh, we caught some grizzlies today. Was life changing. Well, I know you said to me, have you ever seen, you said, you're much older than me. Have you ever seen, uh, you know, a grizzly bear? And I said, well, no, I said, Yogi Bear. I see, <laughs> seen him, you know, live playing baseball. But no, first grizzly bear for me, and yeah. what an experience that was. So our thanks to Mike. Yeah, for sure. And we were in uh, Port Hardy yesterday. And uh, thanks to Double D, Mayor Dennis, for showing us. Man. Around. Today we went to uh, Port Rupert, and uh, this is what uh, we found at the Big House. Uh, it was a terrific learning experience for the Upside Boys today. Welcome. We are now standing in the ceremonial house, the Big House, in in Jachis, Port Rupert, British Columbia. This ceremonial house was built in the early 80s and has gone through many experiences where we had the opportunity to celebrate with the Port Hardy community, the school districts within this community, and uh, the transformation of this space and the culture that was developed in this space has not always been an easy conversation. It, it, it melded and blended the, the two worldviews of totem, totemism and Christianity. And so in the early 80s, those two worldviews melded and joined and worked. And so we've seen both of those activities take place in this great house. And so I would like to introduce my chief, our chief, Wallace Namugwis, Dela Kesla. Hi, um, where to start? Um, for, for one thing, what this big house means to us, it shows who we are, where we come from. We do all our works in the big house, handing down names. And when we potlatch, we, we, um, we give the biggest potlatch and we show our coppers. We hand down our important dances, our songs, and, and we just be us. It's great to be able to network and to work together. And we all, let's all work together and make it right. We met some talented people. Holy today. smokes, we did. Calvin Hunt is a master carver. Right. And uh, we were in his uh, studio today and where he's working on a gigantic totem pole that is going to be presented to the Coast Guard at their new station. So here's a look at uh, how it went at uh, Calvin's place today. Okay, yo, Gaila Kesla, to the upside. Welcome to the Copper Maker. And uh, what I'm working on here is uh, this totem pole. What we do is we come up with the design and a, a, the history of uh, wherever this is going to go. And this is for the new Coast Guard station in Port Hardy here. And we thought it was important that there be something to make a statement of the territory that these guys are in. And what it represented is the land, the sea, and the sky, and the universe is the sun, who is also a creator. It's a scale drawing, one inch to a foot, and it, it's 30 feet. So from this, I'll transfer this to this log here and uh, start working on it. And the process should take prob probably close to three months from start to finish. And what's the significance, you, you know, for yourself and your community to have this in, in Port Hardy? Well, you know, there's, with land claims going on now and people talking about overlapping, and we had shared territories. We never had overlapping territories. So to me, this is making a really statement that when you go by this new Coast Guard station, you're going to see this totem pole, and it really makes a statement that this is Quayil territory. One of the great businesses in this community, and it's been around for uh, close to three decades, is Hardy Boys, and we popped by there earlier today. Uh, the business started in 1994. Um, 
I was working for BC Hydro as a meter reader and really my opportunities with Hydro was to move around as a journeyman and I wanted to stay in Port Hardy. So collectively we got together to made a business plan and uh, 27 years later here we are. Yeah. Now tell us how people find your product on Vancouver Island now because it's not maybe what it used to be. We don't have much of a retail presence in the grocery stores but our product is available online. Uh, we recently launched our candied salmon jerky. Looks like this. You can find it in quite a number of stores. It's growing. So I will try the smoked finger, please, the <laughs> yeah. peppercorn. And I already had uh, chicken fingers last night for supper, so <laughs> yeah. I'll try something different. Yeah. All right, so here and, we have uh, Mandy. Here's Mandy. So this is you. This is me. And this is, yeah. Not Could you. we have those rearranged, please? Yeah, jeez, Mandy. Yeah, thank Come you. On, Come Mandy. on, Mandy. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Mandy. Oh, yeah. Oh. Very good. Much better than the raw oyster I had in Fanny Bay. Bay. With apologies to our friends in Fanny Bay. I want to go back to it this morning where we started off, uh, you know, out meeting these incredible people, of course, uh, Calvin and the totem pole he was working on, and then quite an activity right next door uh, yeah. with the kids and the teachers the, there. There was some stretching and uh, language immersion. Uh, it was quite educational. It really was. One of the things that we want to do, and we're trying to uh, get people to do across um, our territory, is every morning um, express our gratitude to the earth and to the long life maker. And for us, the long life maker is all about us, the plants, the animals, everything. And so it's our belief that if we can all collectively share gratitude each morning, that we can um, help to increase the momentum for language revitalization for our people. And because we believe in that shared energy and that shared support for language. and. As you can see, it's an intergenerational journey, and that's one of the most important things in, in regard to language revitalization, and is that it become, once again, an intergenerational journey. We met uh, Mike. Traffic was terrible. <laughs> we was pretty Man. busy this morning. <laughs> yeah. How many well, lights did you stop at? <laughs> no, <laughs> on the way here. We met uh, Mike Willie and his lovely uh, daughter, Miyumi. Mayumi, rather, yes. and uh, of Sea Wolf Adventures. And they took us out, uh, oh. and we tried to find some grizzly bears this morning. Oh, oh yeah. nice. <sighs> no, I don't. So far? So good. Yeah. So, one at a time. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Hold you can step on here. Yeah, we're going to hold the boat in. You could use my shoulder if you need to. Where did we start from and which direction we go and where are we now? Yeah, so we started out from Port McNeil, BC, uh, Vancouver Island North. And we headed up. Uh, we stopped off in Alert Bay uh, where I where I was born and grew up for the first part of my life. Grab, grabbed our catered lunches. And then we went through uh, the Broughton Archipelago and then up through Night Inlet. How far is that trip in like miles or kilometers? Or? We're talking about maybe 55 to 60 nautical miles from, from Port McNeil. You must have hosted people from right around the world that, that yeah. probably come here just for this reason. That's right. So we, we've built our company up, uh, I would say, quite rapidly. We're Indigenous owned, family owned. And so I think they really like that. So the wildlife viewing uh, slash uh, cultural tourism. The, the grizzlies, how do you, you know, how does one find them? Well, there's, the grizzlies, sometimes people get uh, tricked by the rocks, the big boulders that look like grizzlies. So we call them rock bears. Well, it took a while, but we did it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Lenore came out and her cubs are about three and a half years old and so the cubs will stay with them, the mum longer if they're not doing that well. So that's why they're, they're, they're quite big, you've seen them. But uh, very exciting, you know, we, we, went, we went right up the, the estuary, up the river and didn't see anything, went back to the boat and, and just sometimes that happens, they pop out, you know, and uh, it's great. Oh. Coming back up to the north part of the island again. 
Yeah. Stunning scenery, beautiful people, and just an amazing experience. So we should say thanks again to our buddy, Mike Willie. Seawolf. Yeah, seawolfadventures.com. That's the website. Book one of these tours. Yeah. It is it's fabulous. It's a you know, it's a full day for sure. There's a bathroom on board, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. So that's all good there, but uh, yeah, well, you know, a little little queasy early this morning, but that's the way it goes. Anyway, book yourself one of these tours. It's uh, absolutely incredible to see a live grizzly bear as we did today. Yeah. Speaking of three, Kevin Chirac and Cole Sorensen are the two guys that provide the great stories on The Upside. We'll check them out after a short break. Stick around. The Upside is brought to you by IBEW Local 230. The Upside is brought to you by IBEW Local 230. Welcome back to the best of the Upside. Enjoying the north part of Vancouver Island. I've not been to Fort McNeil since when Willie Mitchell won the Stanley Cup. Before the decade. Yeah, and I've been here since 2007 in the Tour de Rock, and you yeah. did it as well in 02 and 03. And yeah. so that was our last experience with the North Island. It won't be our last experience. We'll be back here. And if you haven't been to the North Island before or haven't been for a while, you need to get up here. It's uh, spectacular. It's, it's raw. It's rugged. And uh, it's stunning. Yeah, oh yeah. Thank you. Triathletes like Matthew Sharp are a special breed. You gotta hurt a little bit in the right way, of course. One. Yep. It's a no pain, no gain sport Sharp quickly fell in love with around two decades ago when his idol Simon Whitfield achieved Olympic immortality. I'd never really heard of triathlon until he won his gold medal uh, and you know seeing him cross that finish line and, and you know achieve a huge moment for Canada you know it was incredibly inspiring. Sharp started competing at a young age in his hometown Campbell River before moving to Victoria as a teen and eventually becoming a national champion. That's around the time Czech News first met Sharp at Thetis Lake in 2010. Pretty confident after the, uh, the win at Nationals. Today he's bigger, stronger and faster. Well, this is the fifth Olympics that I've coached Canadian athletes for, and Matt is definitely cut from the same cloth as his predecessors. And Lance Watson should know. He's coached the likes of Ironman champion Brent McMahon and the aforementioned two-time Olympic medalist Whitfield. Do not be afraid to look within yourself for that last 400. He says the two elite Islander athletes have played a big role in Sharp's rise in the sport. The sharing of knowledge and the passing of the baton from generation to generation is really powerful in this community. And after a year-long delay, Sharp is now in the final stages of climate training with a trip to Tokyo just days away. It's been a dream of mine since I was a kid uh, to compete at the Olympics and to represent Canada. And, you know, we almost didn't have this opportunity. And so I'm seriously just so grateful. I think that, you know, I'm most proud of him as the person that he has become and the young man that he's become. He's shown um, an incredible amount of determination and grit and perseverance through all of this. Following in the footsteps of a Canadian icon, now ready to write his own Olympic story. Our goal is to come back with a medal, so I'm uh, very excited for that opportunity as well. We have a terrific upside story to share with you tonight. Those with pets know that traveling with animals can be a bit of a challenge, but one Victorian man wouldn't want it any other way, as he and his dog are set to embark on a cycling journey to the Arctic. And it's all for a good cause. Kevin Chirac has the story. Meet the cycling road trip tandem of Paul and Cinder. She is always smiling. She is always staying positive. Uh, she doesn't complain. We're definitely meant to be. Cinder, say hi to the camera. Together, they have a thirst for adventure and are set to embark on the ultimate expedition. We're going to be cycling from Victoria, B.C. up to uh, the Arctic. It's a near 4,000-kilometer journey to Taktoyaktak, not meant for the faint of heart. We have bear spray. We have uh, a pen for bear bangers. But it's not the first time this school teacher and six-year-old Husky Shepherd have hit the road. A few years back, Paul and Cinder traveled to Manitoba for a spiritual ride in honor of Paul's late grandmother. Through that journey, uh, I realized that she is able to take on something of that magnitude. We make stops about every hour. And now they're heading north with a special purpose. This time around, uh, we wanted to give back and support an organization that um, deals with vet care when it comes to animals. 
They'll be riding for Broken Promises Rescue, a volunteer run nonprofit helping orphaned animals get the help they need. It's a cause Paul felt personally connected to, as Cinder is also a rescue who's dealt with health issues in the past. That's what inspired me to kind of give back to this uh, organization because I understand how difficult it is to come up with that money and uh, for the care of your animals. Earlier this week, Paul set up a volleyball tournament fundraiser for the cause and launched a GoFundMe page. Uh, we spend about 120000 a year, but so this is going to be a huge help. I think it's just utterly amazing what he's doing. Pedaling while paying it forward and making lifelong memories with his best friend. Pro soccer is set to return to Langford in just a few weeks, marking Pacific FC's first home game in nearly two years. And one season ticket holder is hoping to give, uh, get fans in the spirit while also giving back to those who could really use it right now. Kevin Chirac has the story. Seat 15 and 16. Nicola Brailsford has been a Pacific uh, FC season ticket where? holder since day one. In terms of a community, it's the best thing or one of the best things that could happen. It brings everybody together. She loves the fans and the atmosphere, and she'll be there when the team returns to Langford July 30th in their first home game in nearly two years. But for now, she's rallying all PFC fans to give back. This is a grassroots uh, fundraiser that we're, we've organized. Everywhere we look. With BC wildfires ravaging communities and devastating the lives of many, Brailsford came up with a plan. You know, I'm sitting there talking to my girlfriend, and she's like, gosh, there was just something to, we could do. And I said, well, there is something we can do. Let's, let's do something. I'll grab those as soon as we're done. So she turned to her favorite team for an assist. I told her, hey, it's, it's last minute, but we have a match against Forge on Saturday. We could do a watch party for that, bring our fans out. Brailsford also reached out to local businesses and the Royal Canadian Legion, who all stepped up in donating food and supplies. <laughs> so far, I've, I've met... Uh, a handful of really great people so far just in the last like six days uh, getting this together. So we're going to have a big uh, projector screen set up right around uh, center there. Grails Ford and Pacific FC will be throwing a barbecue watch party tomorrow night at the Island Training Center in Langford as Pacific FC plays Forge FC on the road. Come for a beer and, uh, and a burger for charity and stay for a pretty amazing match uh, between two of the best teams in Canada. The fundraiser will benefit the Red Cross supporting victims of the B.C. wildfires. Yeah. It's a reminder that when there's a will, there's a way. And how just one person can make a big difference. He called them the Cub Reporters in celebration of the Grizzlies uh, that we saw, the three Grizzlies. So they're two guys, but they work as hard as three Grizzlies, really. Anyway, they're uh, doing a great job, and the smiles of the day were fantastic. We had a lot of fun with the local people uh, doing those this week, so we'll get back to those in just a moment. The Upside is brought to you by IBEW Local 230. The Upside is brought to you by IBEW Local 230. Hey there, welcome back to the best of the Upside. We're in Fort McNeil, but we were also in Fort Hardy this week. And you had some fun meeting some of the locals. Well, we did. We had a little game we devised called the Port Hardy Har Har, where we thought we would tap into some of that North Island comedy that uh, nobody's mined before up until the upside got up here. So here's some samples of the Port Hardy Har Har. This is Vari, who's got a great, it's a fish joke, right? It is. Okay, is. let's go. <laughs> What day do fish hate the most? I don't know. Well, does anyone, can anyone take a guess? Uh, okay, I'll say uh, Monday, because nobody likes Mondays. Ah, well, not quite. That's actually quite the opposite. It's Friday. Well, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Great no joke. fish likes Friday. <laughs> People are uh, giving us great jokes, and Caitlin's going to give us a great one right now. What's your joke? What is a robot's favorite music? I don't, what is a robot's favorite music? I don't know. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Caitlin. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The Port Hardy Har Har Joke Festival from the North Island continues. This is Willis. Hi, Willis. We're here on Stories Beach. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, it's beautiful. Man, I love alive. it. Man, yeah. alive. All right, let's get that joke from you. 
a horse walks into the, a bar and the bar t and goes up and the bartender says, how can I help you? And the horse looks at him and the bartender says, why the long face? Oh, that's terrible. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, then it belongs on this show. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Willis. Oh, you, you're not welcome, but yeah. <laughs> Another Port Hardy har har. This is uh, the beautiful Lorraine here on Stories Beach today. Nice to have you on the show, Lorraine. And thanks for watching. You watch most nights. Yes. Oh, I do. Yes. Well, that's terrific. How do you how do, how do you stand that? <laughs> yes. The upside. Always one of my favorites. Well, yes. thank you very much. Well, we're happy to have you on the show tonight. The Heart Port Hardy har har joke festival continues, and let's have yours. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between um, a shower curtain and toilet paper? I don't know. Well, it <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so you're the guy. So, so, so you're the guy. So you're the guy. There we go. All right. <laughs> Thanks, oh, Lorraine. Yes. <laughs> Port Hardy, har har. Well, sadly, that is it. The end of the best of the upside. And thanks to every single person that came over and said hello. Yeah. And uh, said they watched the show. And even a few said they enjoyed it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was surprised at that. But we got a little bit of that this time. So, yeah, great time up here. I uh, hope you got a chance to swing by to play Wheel of McNeil with us and win any number of our great prizes. Look at this array of prizes we had here. I mean, we had, you know, hot rods in the gas station. We had pull tabs, coffee cups, Jerky. five bucks. I mean... Take that, uh, Jeopardy. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> hey, tomorrow, big hey, show. Big show. We are going to uh, tackle our fear of heights tomorrow night. We're going to go to the Malahat Skywalk. We're yeah. Gonna do a behind the scenes look at uh, Vancouver Island's newest attraction. Join us then tomorrow night at 5. Until then, have a good The Upside is brought to you by IBEW Local 230.